Hello and welcome to IHSEQ. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that seems to get a lot of people confused, which is PAT testing. So to start with, it isn't PAT testing. PAT stands for Portable Appliance Testing. So when you say PAT testing, what you're actually saying is portable appliance testing, testing. So the first question is, is portable appliance testing a legal requirement? The answer is no. The law requires that your portable electrical equipment is safe. Now, portable appliance testing is one means of checking whether it's safe or not. The most important part is actually a visual inspection of the equipment. Have a look at the casing, have a look at the leads, the plug top. Is it all intact? Are there any bare wires exposed? Exposed? Is everything doubly insulated? Are the cable? Is the cable doubly insulated? This should be done pre-use for things like hand tools and periodically for larger items like printers that don't get moved around. Is there a legal requirement to have a sticker on a portable appliance? No, none at all. You do need to have a means of identifying whether the equipment has been checked and is safe or not though. And a sticker is a very handy way of knowing that. Most businesses think they're required to have their portable appliance tested every 12 months. Another complete myth. The, peer, the frequency of the testing is down to the person doing the inspection, the competent person. Electrical tools that are used frequently and are in a higher risk environment, likely to be dropped or knocked or damaged. 12 months is probably far too long for those pieces of equipment. They should be done perhaps weekly or monthly, depending on the judgment of the competent person doing the inspection and test. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you've got a huge, great big printer that sat in the corner of your office, is never moved, doesn't get knocked into or anything like that, then there's absolutely no point pulling it out once a year and plugging it into a, a, a testing machine just to put a new sticker on it. Um, I'd say in the best environments, perhaps every five years is, is plenty um, for a test on that, unless it gets moved around or unless it's been knocked. Um, if you move it, then perhaps you should perhaps you get it inspected if you suspect that there might have been some damage. Something else I see quite frequently when I go to businesses that have had um, their portable appliance tested by a company is items that are doubly insulated with a sticker on and have been tested. Let me find your plug to show you what I mean to see if an item is doubly insulated or not. Okay, let's see if I can get this to focus on there. So, on this plug top, you should be able to, in between the rubbish bin and the house on fire, you should be able to see a square inside a square. That means that this is doubly insulated. Which means if you plug it into a tester, you're not actually reading anything at all. There's absolutely no point plugging that in. All you would do with this item here is to have a look, no cracks, no damage, looks absolutely fine. Let me show you uh, what we should be looking at. So, here I've got a charger. When you're inspecting a piece of electrical equipment, portable electrical equipment, what makes it portable? First of all, what makes it portable? The fact it's portable is it's on a plug top. It doesn't matter if it stays in one place all the time. The fact that you have the ability to unplug it and move it means that it is portable. If it's hardwired into, if it's hardwired into an outlet, then it isn't portable because it's fixed to the wall. Might sound obvious, but 
uh, things like panel heaters, um, panel heaters mounted on the wall, go into a, a switched outlet. They're not portable, you haven't got a plug top, don't come under your portable appliance testing. So we're looking at the plug, absolutely no damage, all intact, no cracks, go through the lead, no kinks, no damage to the insulation. Again with the base here, absolutely fine. I'm just looking to see if this is doubly insulated or not. Here we go, again on this, we've got the square inside the square, if I take myself out of focus, can you see that? So that is all you would do for this piece of equipment. Just look at it, no damage, no cracks, no exposed wires. Absolutely no point plugging this into a machine and pressing test because you will not get a result. And there's absolutely no legal requirement to put a sticker on this to say that I've inspected it. What you do need to do is you need to ensure that everything is safe. Therefore, a testing and inspection regime is the best way to do that. So log in all of your portable appliances and keeping a record of when the inspection and if any testing was done and monitor your regime so that you're confident that all your equipment is safe. Another question I get asked is does brand new equipment need portable appliance testing, i.e. the testing. No, definitely not. When you unpack the new equipment, you should give it a quick visual inspection to make sure there's no damage and that it's sound and it's okay and it's safe to use. You can also, you can then add that to your list of equipment that you have and a competent person needs to make an assessment on how frequently that piece of equipment should be inspected and if it requires a test also. It's important to remember if you have paid for a company to come in and test all of your portable appliances and stick stickers all over your portable appliances and they have a retest date on them, you are then exposing yourself to have to get those items retested. Because if somebody like me or a fire officer or an HSC inspector comes around and sees those stickers clearly displaying that that piece of equipment says that it's out of date for a test or inspection, you are then failing to meet your obligations. For me, a much better idea is to have asset numbers on your portable equipment, have a register of your portable equipment, and conduct routine checks, inspections, and where required, tests on your portable equipment at correct frequency rates. High use, high risk tools, every month or so, depending on the use, big, large pieces of equipment that never get touched, no risk of damage a year, two years, three years, five years. Then, when an inspector, a fire officer, or somebody like me comes around to your business and asks if that piece of equipment is in date for inspection or test, you can open up your register, find the asset number, find the piece of equipment, you can tell us exactly when it was last checked and when it's due to be checked again. You can keep a record of the condition of it. Far more important to me and any of this is if you have items with plug tops on that are regularly used, like tools, that the user gives them a quick visual check before use to make sure no damage has occurred since the last use. And if a piece of electrical equipment is damaged whilst in use, it needs to be quarantined and disposed of properly or repaired if you can get it repaired. Unfortunately, we don't repair things as much as we used to do. I really hope this short video has helped some of you unravel the confusion that is PAT, PAT testing, your portable appliance management, however you want to put it. If you want to know any more information, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.